Today, we're going to start the new topic of mutations and biotechnology. So we are going to open up those guided notes that are in your Google Classroom, and we're going to start on slide two. So a mutation is a change in the nucleotide base sequence of a gene or DNA molecule. There are different types of mutations. So a germ cell mutation, remember germ cell is another term for the gamete or the sex cell. And so this occurs in the organism's gametes and can be passed to offspring. Somatic cell mutations, again, somatic cells, again, are those body cells. They occur in an organism's body cells and only affect the organism. So an example of these kind of mutations, could be skin cancers, leukemia, um, anything where we have those somatic cells growing in a way that they shouldn't be. And then we have lethal mutations. And these are mutations that will cause death. Usually this occurs before birth. Sometimes um, it occurs shortly after birth or a few years after birth, but they are considered lethal. Mutations can be harmful, beneficial, or they can be neutral and have no effect at all. So what can cause mutations? Errors during replication. So we talked about in DNA and protein synthesis, how that DNA replicates, how it goes through and, and has that um, DNA polymerase, it checks for um, those mistakes. But again, it's happening so quickly, the errors do occur. Then we have genetic factors, so it can be passed on. And then we have environmental factors, which are known as mutagens. So these are things that you might be exposed to that then can cause cancer to occur. So physical mutagens would be UV radiation, gamma rays, alpha particles, or X-ray radiation. Whereas chemical mutagens could be things like nitrous oxide, hydroxylamine. Um, it could be anything that you are exposed to that could cause that uh, mutation to occur. So let's talk about chromosome mutations. So there's um, several types and we're, this is what we're going to focus on today and you're going to have a worksheet on this. So do, deletion is exactly what it means. There's a loss of the piece of chromosome due to breakage somewhere. So a whole sequence might be deleted or a whole codon might be deleted, which would change that pattern. Duplication, just like it sounds, a segment of the chromosome is going to duplicate itself and it's going to be kind of doubled. So you're going to see this pattern and then that same pattern. Inversion is when a chromosomal segment breaks off and flips around backwards. So it, it's inverted. So it might be going this way. And then if it inverts, it's going to be going the opposite direction. Translocation is when we have one piece of chromosome that breaks off and reattaches to a non-homologous chromosome. So we've got it relocating basically to someplace else that it wasn't supposed to be. And then non-disjunction is when the chromosome fails to separate from its homolog during meiosis. So one gamete might receive an extra copy of the chromosome. And so non-disjunction is when we have more than one chromosome uh, being copied. So let's look at these. So we've got where the normal pattern would be ABC and then DEF and in deletion, the B is now missing. So that has been completely deleted and you have ACDEF. In duplication, we might have ABCDEF, but the B, for whatever reason, duplicates in the pattern, and now we have A, B, B, C, D, E, F. So you can see we've got that duplication of that one uh, letter. In inversion, we've got D, E, F, and A, B, C, but when they invert, we see this flipping of the B and the C, or excuse me, we've got A, E, D, and now we have C, B, F. So you can see how uh, the A ends up here with D and E, and the F ends up here with C and B. So we've got that inverting, that flip-flopping. And then in, in translocation, we've got ABC, DEF, we've got GH, IJKL, 
And what happens is we have a relocation and we get ABC JKL. And on the other one, we have GH ID EF. And so this piece and this piece are combining JKL attaches to this homologous chromosome. And so now we have two different homologous chromosomes that for whatever reason have relocated their genetic pattern. In non-disjunction, we have what the um, meiotic division should be in a normal sequence where we would get all of these um, haploid cells at the end. In meiosis one, if we have non-disjunction occurring, these don't separate right. So we end up with this one over here, but this one ends up with this one over here. That causes an extra chromosome pair, and it also causes pairs that are missing a chromosome. If this happens during meiosis two, we end up with an extra chromosome, a lacking chromosome, and two normal cells. So you can see how these two types of non-disjunction can definitely cause some issues in an unborn child. There are also things called point mutations. So it's the addition or removal of a single nucleotide. And then we have substitution where one nucleotide replaces another. So in this example, they're showing us that instead of being this pattern, we have a substitution where a G gets put here instead of an A. And so that, if, if I gave you a picture of this on the test, you would need to know that that is substitution. When we have frame shift gene mutations, it causes the entire nucleotide sequence to shift. So if there is a deletion, one nucleotide's lost and it changes the amino acid sequence. In insertion, one or more nucleotides are inserted into the gene. So if I have insertion, so let's say this is my normal pattern here in the middle. If I have insertion right here after the TA, I'm getting an additional GC, then that's gonna change my whole pattern here. So instead of GTT, I'm now gonna have GGT, and that is not the same codon as I had here. In deletion, if I um, took that, let's see, which one are they deleting? The T and the A, they're deleting from down here, that now changes my pattern to CCG instead of CCT. And so that is going to alter the codons that we code for in this um, example. So visually, you need to be able to look at a normal frame and figure out was there insertion or was there deletion. Um, the best way I can say to do that is to highlight where you notice that that change occurs or use scratch paper. And then that way you can determine if it was added or deleted. People with a family history of genetic disease may decide to have genetic screening. Genetic screens include things like karyotypes, blood tests, and DNA analysis. So a lot of people um, anymore, they will have genetic screening to test things uh, to see if they carry the trait for let's say breast cancer. And if they had several family members have breast cancer, they may choose to do this. And then that can uh, tell them if they're more susceptible so they can be proactive and trying to prevent that cancer from forming. If you are pregnant, you might choose to have something called an amniocentesis. This is a procedure used to detect disorders in a fetus. The physician will remove amniotic fluid from the amnion, which is the sac that surrounds the fetus, uh, in order to determine if that uh, fetus has any type of genetic disorder. Um, a lot of times when you're if you're older in your 40s, they will recommend an amniocentesis to check for things like Down syndrome and stuff like that, because um, as you get older, those uh, disorders are more prevalent. So in amniocentesis, the sample of amniotic fluid, it's less than one ounce that they remove, and they use a fine needle inserted through the abdomen wall, then into the uterus under ultrasound guidance. 
and the fluid is then sent to a lab for analysis. And this is usually performed at 14 to 16 weeks of pregnancy. And it detects chromosomal conditions such as Down syndrome, sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, tie sacs, and similar diseases. So if you're at a higher risk for your child having any of these conditions, they'll probably recommend this, um, especially if you come back with some of these markers in your original um, blood test. And then what they'll do is they'll test the father to see if they carry those conditions. And if so, then they may recommend that you do this to check to see if the infant would have that. There's also something called chronic villi sampling or CVS. And this is a prenatal test used to diagnose chromosomal abnormalities earlier than with amniocentesis. And it can be performed at nine to 14 weeks. The doctor takes cells from tiny finger-like projections on the placenta called the chorionic villi and sends them to a lab for genetic analysis. Both amniocentesis and CVS use what we call karyotyping. And we're gonna get into karyotyping in the next couple of days. And this is the last slide we'll do today. People who have a family history of genetic disease may decide to have genetic counseling. Genetic counseling is the process of advising individuals and families affected by or at risk of genetic disorders to help them understand the chance of disease occurrence. Genetic counselors can predict the likelihood of a couple's child being affected with a genetic disorder.